Hello, everybody. I'm Sophia Bapner. 30 years ago, I joined an undergraduate program to study engineering. My husband, who I met in the program, joined in the same year. We, like most new students, were excited to make new friends. One way in which we went about doing this is that we were looking for people with common interests. I was a glider pilot, I was into horse riding, and I loved to travel. So I was looking for similarly adventurous-minded people. The other way in which we made friends was based on homophily. Let me explain what that means. At a networking event, a conference, or even an event such as this one, one is often filled with uncertainty. People are trying to figure out, who should I talk to? What should I say to them? In situations such as this, people often gravitate towards others who are like themselves on observable characteristics. This means men are more likely to meet other men, women are more likely to meet other women, and people of the same race are more likely to connect with each other. So what did this mean, networking based on homophily and based on common interests for my husband and me? It meant that we had a set of common friends and then he had his network, which had more men than women, and I had my network, which had more women than men. Now, why did it matter that my network had more women and his network had more men? It matters because men in fields like business and engineering are more likely to occupy high status positions. That is, men are more likely to be senior managers. A recent, a recent article in The Economist indicates that while women today are as well qualified as men, they are likely to enter lower paying occupations with little room for growth. Now, why does it matter that my husband's network has more high status individuals than my network does? It matters because if he were to want to start a research collaboration or start a new partnership, he already knows several senior people at many companies. If he were to attend an event such as this, he's more likely to know senior people and they can in turn connect him to other relevant individuals. For me, in contrast, when I started my first project as a doctoral student, I started out by making many cold calls. My research examines the networking outcomes of women in fields where they are a, where they are a minority. In a recent study with Russell Funk, we find that at technology conferences, women are likely to meet 40% fewer new contacts than men. They spend 50% less time talking with their new contacts and are likely to add 25% fewer new contacts on LinkedIn after the conference. So what can we do about these alarming statistics? How can we improve the networking outcomes of women? Russell Funk and I collaborated with a conference organizer to examine the effect of an intervention. What we did was we took all the attendees of the conference and randomly assigned them to two groups. One group was a control group and the other group was a treatment group. We call the treatment group the search list treatment. Now to the control group, an email was sent by the conference organizer telling them about the importance of networking and asking them to network at the event. The treatment group received a similar email, but the treatment group also received recommendations of people that they could connect with. So they received 16 recommendations. Each recommendation included the name, the, the job title, and the company name. Now, there were two really important aspects about these recommendations that are related to our study. The first is that the recommendations were non-reciprocal. What this means is, is that if I received 16 recommendations, each of my 16 recommendations received 16 other recommendations. 
This means I was two degrees or two network steps away from 256 individuals at the conference. Essentially, what we did is for people in the treatment condition, we created a dense network, a network in which people, both men and women, were more connected to each other because of the recommendations we provided. Now, the other important aspect of our recommendations is that they were completely random. The reason we used random recommendations is that we wanted to understand what is the effect of providing a recommendation rather than what is the effectiveness of a particular recommendation algorithm. So what did we find? We compared women in control to women in treatment, and we compared men in control to men in treatment. And we found that women in treatment made 55% new, more new contacts than, men, than women in control. They spent 90% more time talking to their new contacts. They added 30% more new contacts on LinkedIn after the conference. We also examined long-term effects of our intervention. We tracked the conference attendees for one year on LinkedIn to examine job change. And we found that for women in treatment, the odds of job change was 1.6 times greater than for women in control. Now, surprisingly, there were no differences in the networking outcomes for men. The reason for this is that men do fine when they network organically. I hope you'll remember three things from this talk. The first is that men's and women's networks tend to be different. I recently dropped off my daughter to college at New York University where she's going to be studying global public health. One reason she chose New York is because of its diversity. She like other new students, is excited to make new friends and to, uh, and to experience new things. She auditioned for a dance group. She didn't make the cut, but she made a new friend. She called me very excitedly and said, Mama, what you say in your research is exactly right. It is so much easier for me to connect with Indian-looking girls. Now, to me, that is endorsement for decades of research on homophily by many scholars, because our children are often our, 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 our strongest critics. The second thing I hope you remember is that the networking outcomes for women in industries where they are a minority at conferences are significantly worse than those for men. And finally, simple interventions like providing non-reciprocal recommendations can help improve the networking outcomes for women. Thank you.